Hi, my name is Mary Warner and I'm a professor of English at Madisonville Community College. I'm going to talk to you today about something I call the seven subtle grammar sins. I think many people have heard of the seven deadly sins, uh, whether you have heard about these in Sunday school or maybe have seen the movie with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. Um, but the things we're going to talk about today might not be as serious as pride or wrath or envy or lust. What we're going to talk about are some things that grammar teachers or even anybody that you're dealing with professionally might consider sort of a grammar sin. So English teachers have their own seven deadly sins with respect to grammar. This could be things like, it don't matter, or I seen you at Walmart, or I done my best on this assignment. But there are also little subtle grammar mistakes that we can make sometimes that maybe we don't even realize are mistakes. So I'm going to talk about these today. The first one is irregardless. Irregardless is not actually a word, but sometimes people will say things like, I know you're sick, but your paper is due irregardless. What you actually mean is, I know you're sick, but your paper is due regardless. So try to, try to get out of the habit of using irregardless since it isn't a word. In fact, Microsoft Word tried to tell me when I was making this presentation that it's not a word. The next one is inappropriate use of the apostrophe. An apostrophe is a little piece of punctuation that we use to make a word into a contraction. For example, do not would become don't, um, or to show possession in some cases. For example, this is Mary's presentation. So the Mary apostrophe S, it would show that this presentation belongs to me. The problem comes in when people might try to use an apostrophe to make a word plural. So for example, we might be talking about the Haggerty family and saying that they're on vacation. So what we should say is just the Haggertys are on vacation, not the Haggerty apostrophe S. Or sometimes you might see one of those little decals on the back of a, a back window of a car and it might say uh, the Haggertys and it's got the apostrophe S because many times people see an S and they want to throw in an apostrophe just to hedge their bets. The other problem with an apostrophe is that sometimes people think, oh, okay, I use it to make a word possessive. So the cat washed its face. In this case, ITS is the correct use. People might think, well, if it's possessive, if the face belongs to the cat, it needs to be IT apostrophe S. But ITS is automatically possessive in this case. IT apostrophe S means it is or it has such as, it's my party and I'll cry if I want to, or it's been raining for several days now. Our next example is pronoun overcorrection. And this is something that people often do in an attempt to sound even more educated. And I think that this goes back to when we were little kids and we were told not to say, me and my brother are going on a trip together. It's always, no, 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 you have to say, my brother and I. You always put other people first. And I think that made us afraid to use the word me. So a lot of times people will overcorrect because they want to sound polite and they want to also sound correct. Um, what you need to remember here is that there are things called subjective and objective pronouns. So subjective just means that something is the subject of a sentence. An objective means that it's the object or that it's being acted upon. One of the most common things that I hear is this is between you and I. It should actually be between you and me because I is the subject and me is an object. So one way that I help myself remember this is I might substitute when I say this is between we or this is between us. So we would be a subject, us would be an object, and since it's us, then that might help you to remember, okay, it's between you and me, not between you and I. Another thing that people do with pronouns is that sometimes they'll use myself when they mean me. So you might say, please give the check to Brenda or myself. It should actually be, please give the check to Brenda or me. Um, if you want to use myself, that's something called a reflexive pronoun. And you can think of this as looking in a mirror. So something that refers back to yourself is reflexive. So I'm going to treat myself to a massage. That would be a correct use of the word myself. 
Lay versus lie. This is one that even I have a bad habit of never getting right. Uh, the other day I found myself telling my husband that the cat was laying down on his bed up in the loft. Um, and then I corrected myself and I said, oh, I mean, he's lying down. And my husband kind of looked at me like, you know, I wasn't going to say anything or it didn't matter to me. Um, but lay and lie have different meanings. Lay is something that you perform on something else. You place something down, like lay your papers face down on the desk. Lie is to recline as if to take a nap. So you would say, I'm going to lie down, not lay down, for a few minutes. What makes this particular verb um, problem even more difficult, and I think one of the reasons why everybody hates grammar, is that the past tense of lie is lay, not laid. So if you want to say like, you know, um, he laid down um, and slept all day yesterday, that's not correct. It would be he lay down or I lay down for a few hours yesterday. Affect versus effect, another one that sometimes I have to stop and think about. Affect usually is a verb, and effect is usually a noun. So there are a few little exceptions to these, but in general, most of the time you can't go wrong if you use affect as a verb and effect as a noun. Unfortunately, we don't pronounce these words quite that way. We tend to just say them both the same, and that's why it makes it extra confusing. But how will drinking a 12-pack of Mountain Dew affect my teeth? If you say it, you know, kind of overpronounce the A, that might help you remember it. Or what are the long-term effects of smoking? So if you could try to maybe pronounce them slightly differently, that might help you remember. So affect, usually a verb, effect, usually a noun. Subject verb agreement with each and every. This is another one that um, is kind of subtle and many times um, we might not even realize that these things are wrong. Obvious subject verb agreement is pretty easy to spot. Like you wouldn't say, you know, the students is on spring break this week. You know that that's wrong. But if you have a word like each or every in front of the students, that can kind of complicate matters. So if you think, okay, each of the students is going to get a free textbook, you might stop and think, well, wait a minute, students is plural, but the each makes it singular. So each of the students is going to get a free textbook. Every is another one that's complicated because every sounds like, you know, every, that's everybody. So that, that should be plural, right? But if it's every one of the cats, then every one of the cats is orange with white paws, not every one of the cats are. Because even though cats is plural, every one makes it singular. However, if you use the word are, uh, sorry, all, um, all of the cars on the lot are blue. I think everybody would realize that that is true. We, don't, we would not say all of the cars on the lot is blue. Unless maybe we were just learning to speak or something like that. <laughs> Our last one is incorrect adverb use. And adverbs are words that modify or go with verbs. And adjectives are the words that go with nouns or modify nouns. So if you want to take the word bad, for example, you might say, that is a really bad haircut. But, um, and, and that's okay, uh, because but is, or sorry, bad is an adjective that is modifying the, the noun of haircut. But if you want to use a verb like drives, you might say, she drives badly on ice, so don't ride with her. In this case, badly is an adverb, and it modifies the verb drives. Where the problem can come in is with things called linking verbs. So one of the classic examples is, I feel bad about canceling my date. That's correct. But a lot of times people will say, I feel badly about canceling my date, or I feel badly today, so I'm staying home. So in that case, you think, okay, feel is a verb, but linking verbs are, are little verbs that link a subject to a word that modifies that subject. So in this case, it would actually need to be the adjective. 
An example that I think where you've got another linking verb, tastes, this one most of us wouldn't say. We wouldn't say the steak tastes badly because in that case it's like, well, wait a minute, the steak isn't the one doing the tasting. So if you look back at your first example, you could say, I feel bad makes sense because the bad describes myself. It's not, I feel badly, because that would mean something is wrong with your sense of touch. So that's how I always try to keep those two straight. So that's a, a quick summation of the seven subtle grammar sins, and I hope that you find this useful. Thank you for your time.